Investing in the stock market is one of the easiest, most tried and true ways for you to become a millionaire. And this has been proven time and time again from big, famous investors such as Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch. But the stock market can seem very complicated for beginners, almost like a playground for the ultra rich and famous, just where they can make more and more money with not a whole lot of effort. So in today's video, we're gonna break down a super simple guide on how you can invest in the stock market and how you can become a millionaire over time. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. First, let's discuss what our main objective is in the stock market. And that is going to be buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. If we take a look at my chart that I put up here, you could see that we bought when the stock was about $14 right there. And then we sold when the stock was about $23. But you see, take a look at all of these dips and valleys. And this is what happens as the stock happens, as the stock goes on. The stock can go up and down like that day to day, even month to month. But 2022, 2023, 2024, this is not the real stock chart. This is just something that I put on for, for a visual representation. We can see that over time, the stock does tend to go up. It can sometimes take years. There are crashes and crazy run-ups, but this is generally what happens to stocks, especially ones that mimic the S&P 500. This is what happens to them over time. Now let's explain this with something else to make it easier. I bought this watch, this Seiko SKX 009 for 200 around $200 way back in when was it it was 2018 so I've had this watch for six years $200 they have since discontinued this watch it is now going for $600 used on eBay I am not looking to sell this Seiko watch this is my favorite watch but if I did want to sell it I could make an additional $400 off my initial investment so I paid 200 for it, I bought it at 200, I could sell it for 600. That is exactly what we are trying to do in the stock market. What we don't wanna do is buy high and sell low when everything crashes. So for example, if I bought this one new for 200 and I can turn around and sell it for $50, I lost $150, I lost a lot of my investment. That's what we don't wanna do. All right, let's take a look at this chart that I just drew up which closely mimics the S&P 500 on all of its movements for the past five years. Here is where I got the chart from. You could see a couple of dips, a couple of valleys, a couple of big run-ups, and pretty much just did the best I can just to give you a better visual representation. We wanna buy low and sell high. We don't wanna buy high and sell low. Let's take a look at what happened in 2020. Everyone remembers 2020, all those lockdowns, all that fear, nothing like we've ever seen before. In 2019 or in 2020, right before the lockdowns, we were at about 3.5K, 3,500 for the S&P 500. Once that news came out about the lockdowns and all that fear stuff in the news, it dropped down to about 3,000. I think it dropped down to about 2,800 roundabout. So we lost over 500 points in the S&P 500. What did a lot of people do? Well, they invested 3,500 and they sold at 3,000 because they thought the whole world was coming to an end. And now look what happened the next year, 2021. We were up above $4,000. This is a trap that we've all fallen into. Unfortunately, I've fallen into it a bunch of times. It's a very hard lesson that I've had to learn more than once. This is not something you wanna fall for. If you're investing in something like the S&P 500, it's pretty much guaranteed to go up over time. Let's take a look and see if you held through that crash. 3,500 invested, you lost 500, but you're up to 4K, now you're up 500, then you're back down to 3,500. Now current day, the S&P is 5,400. We've, we've gone all the way up to close to $6,000. So if you bought at the top of all of this, right, you bought at the very highs and you didn't sell, you didn't panic sell when you when the market corrected or crashed, went down significantly, currently right now, you'd be in a much better position just holding through. This is why it's more important to have time in the market rather than just trying to time the market in the short term. Investing is a long-term solution, especially with something like the S&P 500 or a fund like VOO from Vanguard that 
mimics what the S&P 500 does. Now we would all love to be buying here, selling here, then buying here, then selling here. That'll drive you crazy. That's like a get rich quick scheme overnight. Don't do it. It's because you know you never know what's going to happen with the stock. No one knows what's going to happen with the stock. If it's going to go up, if it's going to go down. Chart analysis, technical analysis, it can kind of point us in sort of the right direction, but you never know. Crazy things happen. No one could have predicted the lockdowns or the turmoil that was going to happen in the year 2020, right after February and March, I think the lockdowns happen. So best thing to do, just as time goes on, continue to buy it. And over time, the S&P 500 pretty much is guaranteed to go up. Don't believe me? Let's take a look at the S&P 500 from 1984 all the way to 2024, current filming this video. We could see that it started all the way at, what is that, below $1,400. And you could see it, you know, it, it crashed a bit, then it went up, then it crashed a bit, then it went up. So it does correct really fast, but then it does go right back up. So just something to keep in mind, don't let all of this fear mongering that's being spread anytime the market corrects or crashes, don't let that force you to sell because you think the whole world is basically coming to an end. Now let's talk about compound interest because we need to understand what that really is, because this is how you can make a lot of your money through investing over time. So if we take $100, right, and we want to find out what 10% of $100 is, a lot of people or most people probably are going to realize that 10% of $100 is actually going to be $10, right? So if you invest $100 and you make 10% off of it in one year, right, you would be left with $110. Simple, right? Now, this is where it gets a little bit muddy and it, I had to really, it wasn't, it's not too crazy, but you do have to wrap your head around it for a second. It's very easy to think that, okay, you invest $100, you make 10% a year. After four years, you make $10 a year, right? Because it's 10%, we made it easy. $140 after 10 years, or after four years, right? After 10 years, since you may you invested 100, you added your extra 100 because 10% 10, 10 of 10 times 10 is going to be 100. You make $200 in 10 years, right? That's the way most people think of it. That's actually not true. After your first year, of course, 100 plus 10% of that initial $100 investment, you would be left with $110. Now the second year, it's going to be 10% of this number right here. So $110 times 10% for your second year investing, $11, right? But now after two years, you have 110 plus $11, which gives you a grand total of $121, right? That's our second That's our second year of investing. We now have $121. Let's think about our third year. $121 times 10% is going to be 12.1. It's going to give us a grand total of $133.1. So as time goes on, as you continue to invest, it's not just going to be 10% of your initial $100 investment. You're not just making $10 a year. As the investment grows, this initial principle, the principal balance, the number that you're actually making the percentage off, is going to grow as well. So for your third year, you're gonna be making 10%, you're gonna be making 10% of $133.1. That's gonna be about $13. So again, you're making an extra $3 off of that investment. This is the beauty of compound interest. And yes, over three years, we're only talking about $3. But what happens if we add a couple of zeros to this mix? Well, now if you invest $1,000 in that first year, you're gonna be making $100. And if you invest $10,000, you're gonna be making $1,000. And of course, if you invest $100,000, it's $10,000. A million dollars is going to be $100,000 in your first year. We'll talk about that million dollar balance a little bit later in the video. But this is where compound interest, the more that you have, the more it grows and the more money you can make over time. And as it grows, you make more and more and more money. It just continues to snowball. All right, now I wanna share my screen and show you exactly how you can make lots of money over time investing in something like the S&P 500. Why the S&P 500? Well, if we take a look at this screen that I'm sharing right now, 
S&P 500 annual return since inception, around 10.26%. So since its inception in 1957 through the end of 2023, we're getting 10.26%, pretty much 10%, call it 10%. S&P annual return after inflation. Okay, so while the S&P annual return while the S&P 500 had an annually had an average, average, I don't know how to read. While the S&P 500 had an average rate of return around 10.5%, that average is significantly lower after adjusting for inflation, around 6.6%. In other words, the S&P 500 grows by 6.6% each year. So we can call this 6%. You wanna get an actual number of what you're gonna have. You can do 10%, however, remember, $10 today is not going to have the same buying power as it will 20 years from now. Anyone ever ask their grandparents how much lunch used to cost back 40, 50 years ago? Two slices of pizza and a can of Coke could be had for $2. Now it's gonna be about five or $6. So the dollar unfortunately does lose its buying power over time, which is why after adjusted for inflation, you're around 7%, 6.5, 6.6%. .6 Let's pull up a compound interest calculator. All right, compound interest calculator right now. Let's go ahead and put some numbers in here. Now, initial deposit, $0. Let's say you're 22 years old and you wanna to get to where I am. I'm 37, by the way. So let's say you're 15 years younger than me and you wanna put away as much as you can. Let's just say for the first five years of investing or first five years of saving rather, let's say you can comfortably put away $200 a month, right? Our estimated return, let's say our estimated return is going to be 10% just to make the numbers, the numbers good and then it looks like we need to put an initial investment of $200, right? So $200 monthly over the cost, course of five years with an estimated rate of return of 10% is going to be $15,000. Now let's take a look if it was just nothing, right? If you just put that 200 away every single month for five years, you would get $12,000, right? You follow me? But if we bump it up to 10%, $15,000. And here we go, total principal is $12,200. That's how much you put in over the five years, first five years if you're saving and investing, your total interest, if we look on the screen, is going to be $3,616. So that's money that the market just gave you. And again, this is 10% interest. That 6% interest rate is going to be after inflation. So we can play around with that too, 6% interest. You're gonna be only making about an equivalent of $2,000. Again, as time goes on, the dollar does tend to lose value. Let's say after the, let's say you may, let's go back to 10%. Let's stick it at 10% just to make it easy. $15,800, right? Let's say after five years, you paid off your college loans, and you paid off your car loan, and you can now invest 500. So what we wanna do is let's just put 15,800, right? And then now let's say for the next five years, you can put in five hundred dollars well now for the next five years you would have gotten sixty four thousand dollars right and if you just kept putting that money in the bank and didn't invest it in the s p 500 you would have only had forty five thousand eight hundred dollars but your total interest is actually eighteen thousand dollars you made eighteen thousand dollars in ten years it took you ten years to make this money you made eighteen thousand dollars and almost $19,000 off of just investing in the S&P 500. And remember, you might put in money here and it crashes down. You put money here, it crashes down. This is a long-term investing solution. We're not day traders, we're not swing traders in this scenario. This is a long-term investing solution. Investing is long-term, remember that. So you're doing pretty good. After 10 years, this is your balance, right? Let's take this, pop it in here. Now let's say you get to my age, 37 years old, after 15 years of investing, right? The first five years you invested 200, the next five years you invested 500. Now maybe when you're about 32 years old, maybe you're in a leadership position, you're doing much better financially, maybe you're married, maybe you, you married a 
person that actually thinks and has a lot of same qualities as you and you're able to put in a thousand dollars a month of course you're probably out paying rent hopefully you stay debt free this is what you've been you would be left with one hundred and eighty three dollars one hundred eighty three thousand dollars nine hundred eleven dollars so hundred and eighty three thousand dollars in just 15 years that is substantially more than what i currently have right now and that is why i wish i knew this back when i was 22 when i graduated college and just first started working now this is just a simple you take money and you put it in let's take a look at retirement which i used to hate hate retirement let's take a look over 30 years let's just say long term over 30 years you're 22 and you want to see what are you going to have when you're 50 years and i know when i was 20 years old and i heard 30 years i was like i'm not thinking about 30 years that's forever ago i want to think about how do i pay rent how do i actually get a job that i enjoy how do i make money and save money that way when hyperinflation comes or unexpected expenses come around i can actually go ahead i don't have to use my credit card put myself in debt and actually pay compound interest how do I make smart money decisions? Well, I can honestly say now that 15 years has passed from 22 to 37, in another 13 years, I will be 50. In another 15 years, I'll be 52. So the time, it doesn't go as fast as everyone would make you think it does, but it does creep up on you. And if you're not paying attention, all of a sudden you'll blink and ever notice, oh my God, another year has passed. Oh my God, the summer is over. Let's take a look at, you started with $100. Your contribution amount was $200 a month, 10% return over 30 years, $454,000 to your name. Can you put away $200 a month? How much, how much coffee are you drinking? How many times do you go out and buy coffee? How many times do you go out and buy things that you shouldn't be? $200 over the course of 30 days is less than a dollar a day. Let's do a... Let's do a quick uh, comparison, 30 days, 30 divided by 200. It's not a dollar, my math just sucks off the top of my head. But $200 every single month, not a whole lot. Hopefully most people can find this, even if you do have debt. If you just start budgeting and paying attention to what you're spending, you could actually find this. What if you bump it up to $250? $567,000. Over 30 years, it makes 100,000, almost $100,000 difference. Let's bump it up to 500. Over $1 million at 52 years old. Yeah, 52 is old. But honestly, I thought that 30 was old. I thought 35 was old. I thought 37 was old. But you're hopefully you'll make it. I made it. Getting old sucks, but it does beat the alternative. And it's honestly, it's not that bad. I don't feel much different. Maybe I have a couple more wrinkles in my face, but I feel the same. I feel exactly the same. Smarter though. Definitely much smarter, which is what I'm trying to teach younger people in this video. $1.1 million. Now, let's take a look and say 6% interest, half a million dollars. That's not bad in 30 years. What if you're an insane saver and you wanna save $1,000 a month, which I've actually done? $1 million after inflation, and this is if the S&P only returns 10%, 5%. If we return 10%, $2.2 million after 30 years from age 22 to age 52. And the reason I like 52 is because, yeah, it's it's way older than 30s and 40s, but I could never stand when people say, when you're 65 or 70, you're gonna want retirement. That's, that's pretty far away. Life is gonna look a lot different. We might have different opinions, we might have different needs, different wants. And at that point, honestly, yeah, if you just throw this stuff, stuff in the S&P 500, of course you're gonna have that much money in the stock market or to your name and your investments. Now, 401ks, what they do is you can't touch your money until you're 59 and a half. So if you're 22 and you wait till you're 59 or let's just call it 60, that's about 28 years, right? So let's say you invest, you start off with your, um, with your workplace and you want to invest 200 a month and after 28 years, this is what you'll be, you'll be left with, $367,000. You can invest more in your 401k and get a lot more money. The problem with the 401ks are 
you can't touch that money if you're 50 and you have an emergency. If you're 40 and you have an emergency, you can't touch that money without being penalized and you're gonna erase all of your gains. Investing in the S&P 500 is, over time, as you can see, is really going to compound and allow you to build that wealth over time. And again, maybe you're sitting with, maybe you're sitting with, I don't know, $30,000 in the bank. Maybe you're sitting with $10,000 in the bank and you can only afford to put away 300 a month. What are you gonna have after 10 years? $88,000, that's not bad. What are you gonna have after 15 years? $168,000, 20 years, not 12, 20 years. $300,000, that's, that's, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. And again, remember, compound interest. What's 10% of $300,000 per year? $30,000. So if you have a job where you make $70,000, and you have something like this generating 10% interest every year, 70,000 plus 30,000, 10% of 300,000, you're at $100,000, but you only need a job that pays you $70,000, which is actually pretty cool. Now let's make believe you just wanted to say you're 20 and you wanted to invest in your, you wanted to invest in the S&P 500 over 35 years, just let it go. You only start off with, let's say $200, 20 to 65 is 20, 30, 45, right? $2 million. You wanna pull it out when you're 60? $1.2 million. But here's the thing though, you wanna go from 20 to 60, just investing $200 every single month, you have $1.2 million. You wanna wait till you're 65? $2.1 million. You wanna wait till you're 70? Three point four million dollars when you get to that point where you've been investing for 30 40 50 years the longer you stay in you could see how it exponentially goes higher just going from 65 to 70 what was it 45 2.1 million and then let's add a five years 3.4 million that's almost 1.5 million in five years this is how the rich get rich what they do is they take a million dollars they invest nothing, right? They put it in something, 10%, check it out. $1 million, they made $104,000 just in the first year. They leave it sit there for five years, boom. Over five years, they made $600,000. They leave it sit there for 10 years, they leave it sit there for, and they make $1.7 million. Let's go back to that $1 million though. Because a lot of people say, if you take $100 million and you need $100,000 a year, just to make the math easy, in 10 years, the money's gonna be gone, right? 100, 200, 300. $1 million is $100,000 times 10. So let's take a look at this chart right here. $1 million, after one year, you made $104,000. You take out $104,000, you're right back to a million dollars. What happens the next year? make another hundred thousand dollars, 104,000. This is where if you never actually touch your principal of a million dollars, you can just take out what is there. What or you could just take out the interest. Let's say, what if you have more than a million? What if you have 1.5 million? Now you're making $157,000. What if you have 2 million? Now every year you're making $200,000 and your money is just sitting in the markets. And yes, you're gonna have years where it goes up and down like we saw on this chart, but this is how you can make that money last forever and the money just, it's like a perpetual motion machine. It makes money, you take it out and, and that's it. You, you're, you're pretty much set for life. Long as you don't, long as you're smart with your money. Now, this is way more than a lot of dual income couples make and you may say to yourself, well, if you're here in New York like I am, you see the, the subway tower, you're here in New York like I am, you're in a very expensive area, what are you gonna do? Well, if you're not working in New York, what's holding you in New York? Do you need to be near the city? Maybe you like the city, but is that worth all your money that you worked so hard for all your life? My opinion, it's not, nothing is. You can go somewhere like upstate New York, you can go further out on Long Island, which is very expensive, down to Jersey, you can go to Pennsylvania, you don't need to be where houses cost almost a million dollars. You can be where houses cost much less than half a million dollars and you can keep your expenses low since you don't have to commute at all. You don't need to be near the city and you can still go a couple times a month if you want. 
This is how the rich get rich. And the reason why the poor stay poor is they don't understand things like this. They don't understand the power of investing in compound interest over time. And I wish, I wish I knew this back when I was 22, I would have way more money right now. But as the saying goes, I think it's an old saying, the first best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is right now. So the first best time to start investing your money in the stock market is 30 years ago. The second best time is right now. Thanks for watching.